Pastor Daniel finds a homeless black girl named Tasha praying alone in the cold. What she does next leaves him in tears, as he is shaken by her selflessness and compassion. But when secrets within the town begin to surface, will Tasha's unshakable faith and Pastor Daniel's determination be enough to guide the community toward redemption before time runs out? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Pastor Daniel Harper's footsteps echoed through the empty church as he made his final rounds before locking up for the night. The evening service had ended, and the last of the congregation had trickled out into the cold winter night. He paused at the window, his breath fogging the glass as he looked out at the snow-covered grounds. That's when he saw her. A small figure huddled near the church steps, barely visible in the dim light of the street lamps. Pastor Daniel squinted, his heart skipping a beat as he realized it was a young girl. She knelt in the snow, her head bowed in prayer. Oh, dear Lord, he whispered, quickly grabbing his coat and hurrying outside. The bitter wind bit at his face as he approached the girl. She was so still, he feared for a moment that she might be frozen. But as he got closer, he could see her lips moving in silent prayer. Child, he said softly, not wanting to startle her. What are you doing out here in the cold? The girl didn't respond. She just kept praying, her thin frame shaking with each gust of wind. Pastor Daniel's heart ached as he took in her appearance. Her clothes were worn and much too light for the freezing weather. Snow had settled on her shoulders and in her curly black hair. Sweetheart, he tried again, kneeling down beside her despite the cold seeping through his pants. It's not safe for you to be out here alone. Where are your parents? Still, the girl didn't answer. Her lips trembled, but whether from cold or emotion, Pastor Daniel couldn't tell. He noticed tear tracks on her cheeks, glistening in the faint light. Dear God, he prayed silently, guide me. Help me reach this child. He studied her face, trying to place her. She wasn't a regular at his church, but there was something familiar about her. Then it hit him. He had seen her around town, often alone, always looking lost and afraid. You're Tasha, aren't you? He asked gently. At the sound of her name, the girl's eyes flickered open for a moment, meeting his gaze before quickly looking down again. It was all the confirmation Pastor Daniel needed. Tasha, he said, his voice filled with compassion. I'm Pastor Daniel. I want to help you. Please, can you tell me why you're out here all alone? Tasha's lips kept moving in prayer, but no sound came out. She shivered violently, and Pastor Daniel couldn't stand to see her suffer any longer. Come on, child, he said, slowly standing up and offering his hand. Let's get you inside where it's warm. Then we can talk, okay? Pastor Daniel gently placed his hand on Tasha's shoulder, feeling her tremble beneath his touch. Please, child, he said softly. Come inside with me. It's much too cold out here. Tasha hesitated, her eyes darting between the pastor and the church doors. Finally, she gave a small nod and slowly rose to her feet, her legs unsteady from kneeling so long in the snow. Pastor Daniel guided her into the church, the warmth of the sanctuary enveloping them as they stepped inside. He led her to a pew near the front, where the glow of the altar candles cast a comforting light. Wait here a moment, he said, hurrying to his office. He returned with a thick, warm blanket and a paper bag containing a sandwich and an apple he had packed for lunch but forgotten to eat. Here, Pastor Daniel offered, draping the blanket around Tasha's shoulders. This should help warm you up, and please eat something. Tasha's eyes widened at the sight of the food. She reached out hesitantly, then paused, looking up at Pastor Daniel as if seeking permission. Go on, he encouraged with a gentle smile. It's for you. With trembling hands, Tasha took the sandwich and began to eat slowly, savoring each bite. Pastor Daniel sat beside her, giving her space but staying close enough to offer comfort. As Tasha ate, Pastor Daniel spoke softly. Tasha, can you tell me why you were out there in the cold? Where are your parents? Tasha swallowed hard, her eyes filling with tears. She remained silent for a long moment, and Pastor Daniel waited patiently his heart aching for the young girl. 
Finally, in a voice barely above a whisper, Tasha spoke. We, we got evicted. Months ago. She paused, taking a shaky breath. Dad lost his job. Mom got sick. We couldn't pay rent anymore. Pastor Daniel's heart sank. Oh, Tasha, he said, his voice full of compassion. I'm so sorry. But where have you been staying? Surely not out in the cold all this time. Tasha shook her head. Sometimes, sometimes people let me stay. But not often. Mostly I just find places. She looked down at her hands, twisting the hem of her worn sweater. And your parents? Pastor Daniel asked gently. A tear slipped down Tasha's cheek. Dad, he left. Couldn't handle it, I guess. Mom's in the hospital, but I don't know where. Her voice trailed off. Pastor Daniel felt a lump forming in his throat. Tasha, why didn't you ask for help? The church, we could have... I do ask for help, Tasha interrupted, her voice suddenly strong. She looked up at Pastor Daniel, her eyes shining with an unexpected light. Every night I pray. I pray for my mom to get better. I pray for my dad to come back. I pray for all the other people out there who are cold and hungry and alone. Pastor Daniel was stunned into silence. Here was this child, homeless and suffering, yet her thoughts were for others. Her faith, despite everything, remained unshakable. That's... that's very selfless of you, Tasha, he managed to say, his voice thick with emotion. Tasha shrugged, pulling the blanket tighter around her shoulders. It's what mom always taught me, to have faith and to care for others. So that's what I do. Pastor Daniel stared at Tasha, his eyes wide with disbelief and admiration. He had expected her to ask for help, to plead for a warm bed or a hot meal. Instead, here she was, this young girl who had endured so much, praying for others who had ignored her plight. Tasha, he said softly, his voice quivering. You mean to tell me that even when people walk by and don't help you, you still pray for them? Tasha nodded, her eyes bright with sincerity. Yes, Pastor. They might be having a hard time, too. Maybe they can't help, or maybe they're scared. It's not for me to judge. I just pray that God looks after them. At these words, something broke inside Pastor Daniel. Tears welled up in his eyes and spilled down his cheeks. He covered his face with his hands his shoulders shaking as he wept quietly. Tasha looked alarmed. Pastor Daniel, are you okay? Did I say something wrong? Pastor Daniel shook his head, trying to compose himself. No, no, Tasha. You didn't say anything wrong. You said everything right. He took a deep breath, wiping his eyes. Your faith, your compassion, it's overwhelming. Here you are facing such hardship, and yet your heart is full of love for others. He looked at her, his vision blurry through his tears. Do you know how rare that is? How precious? Tasha shrugged, looking uncomfortable with the praise. It's just what feels right, she said simply. Pastor Daniel felt a profound sense of shame wash over him. How many times had he walked past people in need, too busy or too distracted to stop? How often had he preached about compassion from his pulpit, yet failed to truly live it out? Tasha, he said, his voice thick with emotion. You've taught me more about faith and love in these few minutes than I've learned in years of studying scripture. As he looked at this young girl huddled in a blanket in his church, Pastor Daniel felt a deep sense of responsibility settle over him. He couldn't ignore her plight any longer. He couldn't let her spend another night in the cold praying for others while shivering herself. We're going to help you, Tasha, he said firmly, placing a gentle hand on her shoulder. I promise you that. We'll find a way to get you off the streets and to help your mother. You won't have to face this alone anymore. Tasha's eyes widened, a mix of hope and disbelief flickering across her face. Really? She whispered, as if afraid to believe it. Pastor Daniel nodded, feeling more certain than he had in years. Really? Your faith has moved me, Tasha. It's shown me what true Christianity looks like. And now... It's time for me, for all of us, to live up to that example. Pastor Daniel sat in silence for a moment, 
his mind racing with conflicting thoughts and emotions. He looked at Tasha, her small frame wrapped in the church blanket, and felt his heart ache with compassion. But as much as he wanted to help, he knew the reality of his situation was far more complicated. He sighed heavily, running a hand through his graying hair. Tasha, he began gently, I want to help you, I really do, but I need to think about how we can do this properly. Tasha nodded, her eyes filled with understanding beyond her years. It's okay, Pastor. You've already done so much. Her words meant to comfort only made Pastor Daniel feel more conflicted. He stood up and began to pace, his footsteps echoing in the empty church. The thing is, he said, thinking out loud, the church isn't set up for long-term housing. We don't have the facilities or the resources. He paused, feeling the weight of his limitations. And while our congregation is generous in spirit, they don't always, well, they don't always put that generosity into action. He thought about his parishioners, how they nodded along during his sermons about charity and compassion, but how few actually volunteered at the food bank or donated to local shelters. It was a constant source of frustration for him. Pastor Daniel turned back to Tasha, who was watching him with patient eyes. I want to do right by you, Tasha but I have to be careful. As a pastor, I have responsibilities to the church, to the congregation. I can't just... He trailed off, realizing how hollow his words sounded. Wasn't his first responsibility to help those in need? Wasn't that what Jesus would do? But the practical side of his brain reminded him of the potential consequences. What would the church board say if he took in a homeless girl without proper procedures? What if someone accused him of impropriety, and what about Tasha's mother? There were legal considerations he couldn't ignore. Pastor Daniel felt torn between his desire to help and the realities of his position. He wanted to offer Tasha a home to protect her from the cold and the dangers of the streets. But he also knew that a hasty decision could backfire, potentially harming both Tasha and his ability to help others in the future. He sat back down next to Tasha, feeling the weight of his indecision. I'm sorry, Tasha. I'm trying to figure out the best way to help you. It's not as simple as I wish it could be. Tasha reached out and patted his hand, her touch gentle and reassuring. I understand, Pastor. God works in mysterious ways. Maybe he brought me here so we could figure it out together. Her faith once again left Pastor Daniel in awe. He nodded, feeling a renewed sense of determination. He might not have all the answers yet, but he knew he couldn't turn his back on this child who had shown him the true meaning of faith and compassion. Pastor Daniel looked at the clock on the church wall and realized how late it had become. His stomach growled, reminding him that he hadn't eaten since lunch. Tasha, he said gently, I think we could both use some food. Would you like to join me for dinner? Tasha nodded, her eyes lighting up at the mention of a meal. Pastor Daniel led her to the small kitchen in the church's basement where he often prepared simple meals for himself and occasional church gatherings. As he warmed up some leftover casserole and poured two glasses of milk, Pastor Daniel decided to ask Tasha more about her situation. They sat at the small table, the warm aroma of the food filling the cozy space. Tasha, he began carefully, can you tell me more about your family? Where are your parents? Tasha's eyes lowered to her plate and she pushed the food around with her fork. After a moment, she spoke softly. My mom, Teresa, she's... she's in a hospital. In another state. Pastor Daniel's heart sank. I'm so sorry to hear that. Is she very ill? Tasha nodded, her voice barely above a whisper. She got really sick last year. She couldn't take care of me anymore. The pastor's eyes filled with tears as he listened. And your father? Tasha's lip quivered. Dad lost his job when the factory closed. He... he started drinking. Then he left. We haven't seen him since. Pastor Daniel felt a wave of sorrow wash over him. He reached out and gently placed his hand on Tasha's shoulder. I'm so sorry, Tasha. That must have been very hard for you. Tasha nodded, a single tear rolling down her cheek. Everything fell apart after that. We lost our house. Mom got sicker. 
I've been on my own for months now. The weight of Tasha's story settled heavily on Pastor Daniel's heart. He marveled at the strength and faith this young girl had shown in the face of such overwhelming adversity. In that moment, he knew he had to do something more. Tasha, he said, his voice filled with determination. We need to help you reunite with your mother. No child should be separated from their parent like this. Tasha's eyes widened with hope. Really? You'd help me find my mom? Pastor Danielle nodded firmly. Yes, absolutely. We'll figure this out together. But even as he spoke the words, uncertainty crept into his mind. Where would they start? How could they locate Tasha's mother in another state? What legal hurdles might they face? The task seemed daunting, but looking at Tasha's hopeful face, Pastor Daniel knew he had to try. He squeezed Tasha's hand gently. I don't know exactly how we'll do it yet, but I promise you, we'll find a way to bring you and your mother back together. The next morning, Pastor Daniel woke up early, his mind heavy with thoughts of Tasha and her situation. He knew he couldn't help her alone. He needed the support of his congregation. After a quick breakfast and a heartfelt prayer, he began making phone calls. His first call was to Margaret, the head of the church's outreach committee. Margaret, we have a young girl in need, he explained, his voice filled with hope. Her name is Tasha, and she's been homeless. I was hoping we could... Oh, pastor, Margaret interrupted, her tone hesitant. We've had so many people asking for handouts lately. Are you sure this girl is, well, legitimate? Pastor Daniel felt his heart sink. Margaret, I've spoken with her myself. She's just a child and she needs our help. Well, I don't know, Margaret replied. Maybe we should discuss this at the next committee meeting in two weeks. The pastor's next few calls went similarly. Some congregants expressed concern about the church's limited resources. Others wondered if helping Tasha might attract more homeless people to their community. A few even suggested that she might be lying about her situation. By lunchtime, Pastor Daniel felt discouraged and frustrated. He sat in his office, head in his hands, wondering how his congregation could be so indifferent to a child in need. Hadn't he taught them about compassion and charity? Hadn't they listened to his sermons about helping the least among them? Just then, there was a soft knock at his door. It was Mrs. Johnson, the elderly widow who always sat in the front pew. Pastor, she said gently, I heard about the girl you're trying to help. Is there anything I can do? Pastor Daniel looked up, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Oh, Mrs. Johnson, thank you for asking. Yes, there is. As he explained Tasha's situation, Mrs. Johnson listened intently, her kind eyes filled with concern. When he finished, she reached into her purse and pulled out an envelope. It's not much, she said, handing it to him, but it's what I can spare this month. Please use it to help that poor child. Pastor Daniel felt tears welling up in his eyes. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Your kindness means more than you know. As Mrs. Johnson left, Pastor Daniel felt a renewed sense of determination. He might not have the full support of his congregation yet, but he wouldn't give up. He would continue to advocate for Tasha, to show his flock the true meaning of Christian charity. With a deep breath, he picked up the phone again, ready to make more calls. As Sunday morning arrived, Pastor Daniel felt a mix of hope and apprehension. He had invited Tasha to attend the church service, believing that if the congregation could see her in person, they might open their hearts to her plight. Tasha arrived early, dressed in the cleanest clothes she had. Pastor Daniel greeted her with a warm smile. I'm so glad you could make it, Tasha, he said softly. Remember, you're welcome here. The young girl nodded, her eyes cast downward. Thank you, Pastor, she whispered. As the congregation began to file in, Pastor Daniel noticed the curious glances and whispers directed at Tasha. Some members seemed to purposely avoid looking at her, while others openly stared. Tasha, sensing their discomfort, quietly made her way to the back pew. The service began, and Pastor Daniel took his place at the pulpit. His sermon that day was about compassion and helping those in need, inspired by Tasha's situation. As he spoke, his eyes scanned the congregation, 
hoping to see signs of understanding or empathy. Instead, he was met with polite but disinterested faces. Throughout the service, Tasha sat silently in the back, her head bowed in prayer. Her lips moved slightly as she offered up her quiet supplications, unnoticed by most of the churchgoers. Pastor Daniel's heart ached as he watched her, a solitary figure amidst a sea of people who should have been reaching out to her. Despite his impassioned words about Christian charity and the importance of helping the less fortunate, Pastor Daniel could sense a coldness in the room. The congregation seemed more focused on their own concerns, their weekly routines, their social circles, their personal worries, than on the young girl in need sitting among them. As the service drew to a close, Pastor Daniel made one last attempt to draw attention to Tasha's presence. Before we end, I'd like to remind everyone that our church is a place of refuge for all of God's children, he said, his voice filled with emotion. Let us open our hearts to those who may be struggling, even if they're right here in our midst. A few heads turned briefly towards Tasha, but the moment passed quickly. As the congregation began to file out, chatting about their plans for Sunday lunch, Pastor Daniel watched with a heavy heart as Tasha remained in her seat, still praying quietly. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Pastor Daniel sat alone in his study, the weight of the day's events heavy on his shoulders. The empty church seemed to echo with the indifference he'd witnessed during the morning service. He rubbed his tired eyes, his mind replaying the congregation's lukewarm response to Tasha's presence. Where did I go wrong? He whispered to himself, his voice barely audible in the quiet room. Pastor Daniel had always prided himself on leading a compassionate congregation, but today's events had shaken that belief to its core. He leaned back in his chair, his gaze falling on the worn Bible on his desk. Had he failed to instill the true meaning of Christian charity in his flock? The thought gnawed at him, filling him with a deep sense of disappointment, not just in his congregation, but in himself. As he wrestled with these troubling thoughts, a soft sound caught his attention. Pastor Daniel rose from his chair and quietly made his way to the sanctuary. There, in the dim light of the church, he saw Tasha kneeling at the altar, her head bowed in prayer. He stood silently, not wanting to disturb her. As he listened, he could hear her whispered words of gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Daniel's kindness, Tasha murmured. Thank you for the warm blanket and the food. Please bless this church and its people. Pastor Daniel felt a lump form in his throat. Here was this young girl, with so little to her name, expressing thanks for the meager help she'd received. Her unwavering faith and gratitude, despite the coldness she'd faced, touched him deeply. In that moment, Pastor Daniel felt a renewed sense of purpose wash over him. Tasha's simple prayer had rekindled the flame of determination in his heart. He realized that while he couldn't change his entire congregation overnight, he could start by setting an example. With quiet resolve, Pastor Daniel made a silent promise to himself and to God. He would continue to help Tasha, to show her the true meaning of Christian love and compassion. And through his actions, he hoped to inspire his congregation to open their hearts and rediscover the essence of their faith. Pastor Daniel sat at his desk, phone pressed to his ear, his free hand nervously tapping a pen against the worn wood surface. Tasha sat quietly across from him, her hands folded neatly in her lap, her eyes fixed on the pastor's face. I see, Pastor Daniel said softly into the phone, and there's no possibility of moving her to a facility closer to here. He listened intently, his brow furrowing deeper with each passing moment. I understand. Thank you for your time. He placed the phone back in its cradle and looked up at Tasha. The young girl's face remained calm, her eyes filled with a quiet acceptance that both amazed and unsettled him. Tasha, he began gently, I've spoken with the hospital where your mother is staying. I'm afraid the news isn't what we hoped for. Tasha nodded slowly her voice barely above a whisper. It's okay, Pastor Daniel. God knows what he's doing. Pastor Daniel felt a lump form in his throat. Here was this young girl facing news that would devastate most adults, and yet she sat before him with an unwavering faith that left him in awe. Your mother, Teresa, he continued, choosing his words carefully. She's very ill, sweetheart. 
The doctors say she can't be moved to a hospital closer to us. Tasha's eyes glistened with unshed tears, but her voice remained steady. I understand. God must have a reason for keeping us apart right now. Pastor Daniel leaned forward, his heart etching for the young girl. Tasha, your faith is truly remarkable, but it's okay to feel sad or frustrated. God understands our pain too. She nodded, a single tear finally escaping down her cheek. I know, Pastor. I just wish I could see her, to tell her I love her. The pastor felt a wave of helplessness wash over him. He wanted nothing more than to reunite this brave young girl with her ailing mother. But the obstacles seemed insurmountable. The distance, the medical complications, the lack of resources. It all felt like an impossible puzzle with no solution in sight. We'll figure something out, Tasha, he said, trying to inject confidence into his voice despite his own doubts. God works in mysterious ways, and we have to believe he has a plan for you and your mother. Tasha looked up at him, a small smile gracing her lips despite the sadness in her eyes. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. I know he does, and I'm grateful for all you've done already. Her words, filled with such genuine gratitude and faith, struck Pastor Daniel to his core. Here he was, feeling powerless and inadequate, while this young girl found strength in her unwavering belief. It was a humbling reminder of the power of true faith. As he watched Tasha bow her head in silent prayer, Pastor Daniel felt a mixture of admiration and determination. He might not have all the answers, but he knew he couldn't give up. Somehow, someway, he had to find a solution to reunite Tasha with her mother. That afternoon, Pastor Daniel stood before the church board, his hands clasped tightly behind his back. The small conference room felt stifling, the air thick with tension. He had just finished presenting his proposal to raise funds for Tasha's mother's medical care, and the silence that followed was deafening. I appreciate your concern, Pastor. Mrs. Thompson, the head of the finance committee, finally spoke. Her voice was cool and measured but we simply can't justify allocating church funds for one family's personal situation. Pastor Daniel felt his heart sink. He had expected some resistance, but the outright dismissal caught him off guard. But isn't this exactly what our church is meant to do? He asked, his voice strained with emotion. To help those in desperate need? Mr. Willow, a longtime board member, cleared his throat. We understand your position, Pastor but we have larger community projects that require funding. The new youth center, for example. A youth center is important, Pastor Daniel agreed. But what about the immediate needs of those suffering right now? What about Tasha? The board members exchanged uncomfortable glances. Pastor Daniel could sense their indifference, their reluctance to engage with the real, messy work of charity. Perhaps we could take up a special collection, suggested Deacon Williams his tone making it clear he thought this would solve the problem. Pastor Daniel shook his head, frustration building within him. A collection won't be enough. We need a concerted effort, a show of true Christian charity. Mrs. Willow sighed, her patience wearing thin. Pastor, we sympathize with the girl's situation, but we can't prioritize one case over the needs of the entire congregation. As the meeting dragged on, Pastor Daniel felt a growing sense of disillusionment. The church board, once passionate about helping others, now seemed more concerned with budgets and building projects. Their words of sympathy rang hollow, masking a deep-seated indifference to individual suffering. He looked around the room at the faces of people he had known and worked with for years. When had they become so callous? When had the church, once a beacon of hope and charity, become so focused on itself that it forgot its true purpose. I can't believe what I'm hearing, Pastor Daniel said, his voice quiet but filled with disappointment. We're supposed to be the hands and feet of Christ in this community. How can we turn our backs on a child in need? The board members shifted uncomfortably in their seats, avoiding his gaze. Their silence spoke volumes, and Pastor Daniel felt a wave of sadness wash over him. He realized that the challenge he faced was far greater than just raising money for Tasha's mother. He was up against a systemic indifference that had taken root in the very heart of his congregation. As the meeting adjourned, Pastor Daniel walked out of the room, 
his shoulders heavy with the weight of his failure. He had always believed in the power of his church to do good, to make a difference in people's lives. Now he wondered if that belief had been misplaced. Despite the setback with the church board, Pastor Daniel refused to give up on Tasha. He knew in his heart that helping her was the right thing to do, regardless of what others thought. With a heavy sigh, he decided to take matters into his own hands. The next day, Pastor Daniel approached a few of his most compassionate parishioners after the morning service. He spoke to them quietly, explaining Tasha's situation and the urgent need to help her mother. To his relief, a handful of them nodded in understanding, their eyes filled with genuine concern. I can't offer much, Pastor, Mrs. Brighton, a kindly widow, whispered as she pressed a crumpled $20 bill into his hand. But I hope it helps. Throughout the week, Pastor Daniel discreetly collected donations. It wasn't much, but every dollar gave him hope. He carefully tucked the money away in an envelope, planning to use it for a trip to visit Teresa in the hospital. While Pastor Daniel worked on gathering funds, Tasha found her own way to contribute. Despite her circumstances, she insisted on helping around the church. Each morning, she would quietly pick up a broom and sweep the sanctuary floors. In the afternoons, she organized hymnals and straightened the pews. Tasha, you don't have to do this, Pastor Daniel said one day, watching her polish the wooden altar with care. Tasha looked up at him, her eyes shining with gratitude. It's the least I can do, Pastor. You've been so kind to me. Her words touched Pastor Daniel deeply. Here was a girl who had so little, yet she gave so much. Her quiet strength and unwavering faith continued to inspire him. As the days passed, Pastor Daniel finalized his plans to visit Teresa. He approached Tasha one evening, finding her arranging flowers for the Sunday service. Tasha, he said gently, I've managed to save up some money. I think we might be able to visit your mother soon. Tasha's eyes widened, a mix of hope and worry crossing her face. Really? But is it enough? I don't want to be a burden. Pastor Daniel placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. You're not a burden, Tasha. We're going to do this together. Tasha's lips trembled as she whispered a quiet, thank you. Her gratitude for even this small kindness was overwhelming, and Pastor Daniel felt his resolve strengthen. He knew the road ahead would be challenging, but seeing the glimmer of hope in Tasha's eyes made it all worthwhile. One sunny afternoon, Pastor Daniel sat across from his old friend and fellow pastor, Reverend Mark, in a small cafe near the church. The aroma of coffee filled the air as Daniel stirred his cup absently, his mind heavy with thoughts of Tasha. I just don't know what to do, Mark, Daniel sighed, his eyes filled with concern. The church board won't help and most of the congregation seems indifferent, but I can't just abandon her. Reverend Mark leaned back in his chair, his brow furrowed. Daniel, I understand you want to help, but you need to be careful. You can't solve everyone's problems, you know. Daniel looked up, a spark of determination in his eyes. But Tasha isn't just anyone, Mark. You should see her faith, her strength. Despite everything she's been through, she still thinks of others before herself. Mark sipped his coffee thoughtfully. I hear you, Daniel, but I'm worried you're getting too emotionally involved. We have to maintain some professional distance as pastors. It's for our own good and for the good of those we serve. Daniel shook his head, his voice quiet but firm. I can't just stand by and do nothing. Tasha needs help, and if the church won't provide it, then I will. Daniel, Mark said gently, I'm saying this as your friend. You're taking on too much. What about your other responsibilities? Your congregation? Your own well-being? For a moment, Daniel was silent, considering his friend's words. Then he looked up, his resolve evident in his eyes. I appreciate your concern, Mark, I really do. But I feel called to help Tasha, even if it means going against advice or expectations. Mark sighed, recognizing the familiar stubborn set of Daniel's jaw. I can see your mind's made up. Just be careful, okay? Don't lose yourself in trying to save someone else. Daniel nodded, grateful for his friend's concern, even if he couldn't follow his advice. As they finished their coffee, he knew the path ahead would be challenging, but he was determined to see it through.
Tasha's quiet strength and unwavering faith had touched something deep within him, and he couldn't turn his back on her now, no matter the cost. Pastor Daniel sat at his desk, poring over old church records and member directories. His eyes were tired from hours of searching, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he was missing something important about Tasha's past. As he flipped through a dusty directory from five years ago, a familiar name caught his eye. Teresa Winston, he murmured, his heart skipping a beat. He remembered her now, a quiet woman who had attended services regularly with her husband and young daughter. With trembling hands, he reached for his phone and dialed a number. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. This is Pastor Daniel. I'm sorry to bother you, but I need to ask about a former member of our congregation. After a brief conversation, Pastor Daniel hung up the phone, his face pale with shock. The revelation hit him like a punch to the gut. Teresa, Tasha's mother, had once been a part of their church family. He learned that Teresa's husband had lost his job shortly after their daughter was born. Then, tragedy struck when their infant son passed away unexpectedly. Overwhelmed by grief and financial stress, Teresa had withdrawn from the church community. Pastor Daniel's mind raced as he pieced together the timeline. No one from the church had reached out to Teresa during her darkest hours. They had simply let her slip away, unnoticed and unsupported. The weight of this realization pressed heavily on Pastor Daniel's shoulders. He remembered Teresa's kind smile, her dedication to the church bake sales, and her beautiful voice in the choir. How could they have failed her so completely? Guilt washed over him as he thought of Tasha, praying alone in the cold. If the church had stepped in to help Teresa years ago, perhaps this young girl wouldn't be homeless and separated from her mother now. Pastor Daniel buried his face in his hands, overwhelmed by the church's failure, his failure, to live up to the teachings of compassion and community they preached every Sunday. The gap between their words and actions had never felt so vast. As he sat there grappling with this painful truth, Pastor Daniel knew that he couldn't change the past, but he could do something now. With renewed determination, he stood up, ready to face the challenges ahead and make things right, not just for Tasha and Teresa, but for all those the church had overlooked. As the days passed, Tasha remained a quiet and resilient presence in Pastor Daniel's life. Her gentle spirit and unwavering faith touched the hearts of some parishioners, who began to offer small acts of kindness, a warm meal here, a new sweater there. But for every supportive member, there seemed to be another who viewed Tasha with suspicion and doubt. The congregation's division grew more apparent with each passing Sunday. During coffee hour after services, hushed conversations and pointed glances filled the church hall. Some praised Pastor Daniel's compassion, while others questioned his judgment. Mrs. Anderson, a longtime member of the choir, approached Pastor Daniel one afternoon. Pastor, she said, her eyes kind, I just wanted to let you know that my sewing circle is putting together a care package for Tasha. We're making her some warm clothes for the winter. Pastor Daniel's heart swelled with gratitude. Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. That's incredibly thoughtful of you all. But as Mrs. Anderson walked away, he overheard Mr. Thompson muttering to another church elder. I don't know about this girl. How do we know she's not just taking advantage of our charity? The tension in the congregation continued to simmer until it finally boiled over. One crisp autumn morning, Pastor Daniel arrived at his office to find an envelope on his desk, marked, For the Church Board. With a growing sense of unease, he opened it and began to read. The letter inside was typed with no signature at the bottom. As Pastor Daniel's eyes scanned the page, his heart sank. The anonymous writer accused him of neglecting the larger needs of the church in favor of a single girl. They questioned his leadership and suggested that his focus on Tasha was detrimental to the congregation as a whole. Pastor Daniel's hands trembled as he set the letter down. He had known there was discontent among some members, but he hadn't realized how deep it ran. The accusation of neglect stung, especially when he thought of all the late nights he'd spent working on church programs and community outreach. As he sat there staring at the letter, he heard a soft knock at his office door. It was Tasha, her eyes bright with concern. Pastor Daniel, is everything okay? She asked quietly. He managed a weak smile. Everything's fine, Tasha. 
don't you worry. But as Tasha nodded and slipped away, Pastor Daniel knew he couldn't ignore the growing rift in his congregation. He would have to address this head-on to remind his flock of the true meaning of Christian charity and compassion. The road ahead would be difficult, but as he thought of Tasha's unwavering faith, he found the strength to face the challenges that lay before him. Pastor Daniel took a deep breath, steeling himself for the confrontation ahead. He clutched the anonymous letter in his hand as he entered the church board meeting room. The faces of the board members turned to him, a mix of curiosity and concern etched across their features. Good evening, everyone, Pastor Daniel began, his voice steady despite his racing heart. I've called this meeting because we need to address an important issue that's dividing our congregation. He placed the letter on the table, smoothing it out with trembling fingers. This letter accuses me of neglecting the church's needs in favor of helping Tasha, but I believe we've lost sight of our true mission. Pastor Daniel looked each board member in the eye as he spoke. Our church isn't just about maintaining a building or organizing events. It's about helping those in need, one person at a time. Tasha isn't a distraction from our purpose. She's the very embodiment of it. A few board members shifted uncomfortably in their seats, but Pastor Daniel pressed on. I have a story to share with you. It's about a woman named Teresa, Tasha's mother. She was once a member of our congregation. The room fell silent as Pastor Daniel recounted Teresa's tragic story, how she had left the church after a personal tragedy, how no one had reached out to help her in her time of need, and how her family's life had spiraled downward as a result. We failed, Teresa, Pastor Daniel said, his voice thick with emotion. We abandoned her when she needed us most. And now, years later, her daughter Tasha has found her way to our doorstep. This is our chance to make things right, to show that we truly live by the principles we preach. He looked around the room, noticing that some of the harder expressions had softened. When we ignore the suffering of individuals, we fail as a church. Our mission isn't just about grand gestures or community projects. It's about being there for each person who needs us, no matter how small their needs might seem in the grand scheme of things. Pastor Daniel's passionate words seemed to strike a chord with some of the board members. Mrs. Johnson, who had been one of the most vocal critics, dabbed at her eyes with a tissue. Mr. Peterson, usually stoic and businesslike, looked thoughtful. I understand your concerns about resources and fairness, Pastor Daniel continued. But I ask you to consider this. What if it were your child out there, alone and in need? Wouldn't you want a community of faith to embrace them, to show them God's love in action? The room was quiet for a moment as his words sank in. Then slowly, Mrs. Johnson spoke up. Pastor, I, I think I may have been too hasty in my judgment. Perhaps we need to reconsider our approach. As the board meeting concluded, Pastor Daniel felt a glimmer of hope. The tide seemed to be turning, with several members expressing newfound support for Tasha's cause. He left the church that evening with a lighter heart, believing that perhaps they were finally making progress. However, fate had other plans. The next morning, as Pastor Daniel sat at his desk reviewing his sermon notes, his phone rang. The caller ID showed it was the hospital where Teresa was being treated. His heart sank as he answered the call. Hello, Pastor Daniel. The nurse's voice was somber. I'm afraid I have some bad news about Teresa. Pastor Daniel's grip tightened on the phone as he listened to the nurse explain that Teresa's condition had taken a sudden turn for the worse. Her organs were failing, and the doctors didn't expect her to recover. We're doing everything we can, the nurse said gently but you should prepare for the possibility that she may not have much time left. As he hung up the phone, Pastor Daniel felt as if the air had been sucked out of the room. He slumped in his chair, the weight of the news crushing down on him. All his efforts, all the progress he thought he'd made, it all seemed futile now. How could he tell Tasha? The poor girl had been clinging to the hope of reuniting with her mother, and now that hope was slipping away. Pastor Daniel buried his face in his hands, feeling utterly defeated. For the first time since Tasha had entered their lives, Pastor Daniel felt his faith waver. He had been so certain that God had brought Tasha to them for a reason, that there was a greater purpose to all of this.
But now, faced with the cruel reality of Teresa's failing health, he began to doubt. Why, Lord? He whispered, his voice cracking. Why bring her to us if we can't help her? What's the point of all this suffering? As the questions swirled in his mind, Pastor Daniel felt a deep sense of despair settling over him. He had always believed in the power of faith and prayer, but in this moment, he felt powerless. The task of reuniting Tasha with her mother now seemed impossible, and he wondered if all his efforts had been in vain. As Pastor Daniel sat in his office, grappling with his doubts, a soft knock on the door interrupted his thoughts. He looked up to see Tasha standing in the doorway, her eyes filled with concern. Pastor Daniel, are you okay? She asked quietly, her voice barely above a whisper. He hesitated, unsure of how to respond. How could he tell her about her mother's worsening condition? But as he looked at Tasha's face, he saw a strength there that he hadn't fully appreciated before. Tasha, I'm afraid I have some bad news about your mother, he said gently, his voice heavy with emotion. As he explained the situation, he watched Tasha's face carefully, expecting to see signs of distress or despair. Instead, to his surprise, she remained calm, her eyes filled with a quiet acceptance. When he finished speaking, Tasha simply nodded and said, I understand, Pastor Daniel. May I pray with you? Stunned by her response, Pastor Daniel could only nod. Tasha knelt down right there in his office and began to pray, her voice soft but unwavering. Dear Lord, she began, we thank you for your endless love and mercy. We pray for my mother, that you may comfort her and ease her pain. We pray for the doctors and nurses caring for her, that you may guide their hands and decisions. And we pray for Pastor Daniel and all those who have shown kindness to me, that you may bless them for their generosity. As Tasha continued her prayer, Pastor Daniel felt something shift within him. Here was this young girl, faced with the possibility of losing her mother, yet her faith remained unshaken. She wasn't praying for a miracle or begging for her mother's recovery. Instead, she was expressing gratitude and asking for comfort for others. Tears welled up in Pastor Daniel's eyes as he listened to Tasha's words. He realized that in his despair, he had lost sight of the very thing he had always preached about, the power of unwavering faith. Tasha's calm acceptance of life's trials, her ability to find hope even in the darkest moments, touched Pastor Daniel deeply. He began to see her not just as someone in need of help, but as a beacon of hope, a living example of the faith he had always tried to inspire in others. As Tasha finished her prayer, Pastor Daniel felt a renewed sense of purpose. He may not be able to change Teresa's condition, but he could learn from Tasha's example. He could choose to have faith, to keep trying, even when things seemed hopeless. Thank you, Tasha, he said softly, wiping away a tear. Your faith is truly inspiring. Tasha smiled gently, her eyes reflecting a wisdom beyond her years. God has a plan, Pastor Daniel, she said. We just have to trust in him. In that moment, Pastor Daniel made a decision. He wouldn't give up, no matter how difficult things became. Tasha's unwavering faith had shown him the way forward, and he was determined to follow that light. The following Sunday, Pastor Daniel stood at the pulpit, his heart racing as he looked out at his congregation. He knew that today's sermon would be different from any he had given before. Taking a deep breath, he began to speak. My dear friends, he said, his voice filled with emotion. Today I want to share with you a story of faith, hope, and the true meaning of serving others. As he recounted Tasha's story, his voice trembled with feeling. He described how he had found her praying in the cold, her selflessness in the face of hardship, and her unwavering faith despite the challenges she faced. This young girl, Pastor Daniel continued, his eyes glistening with unshed tears, has taught me more about faith in the past few weeks than I have learned in years of studying scripture. He spoke of Tasha's nightly prayers for others, even when she herself had nothing. He shared how she had accepted the news of her mother's worsening condition with a grace that had humbled him. Tasha's faith, he said, his voice cracking slightly, has made me reevaluate what it truly means to serve others. It's not just about grand gestures or community projects. 
Sometimes it's about reaching out to one person in need, about seeing the individual amidst the crowd. As he spoke, Pastor Daniel could see the impact his words were having. Many in the congregation were wiping away tears. Others sat in stunned silence, their faces etched with a mix of shame and awe. We have been blessed with so much, Pastor Daniel continued, his voice growing stronger. And yet, we have forgotten what it means to truly give. Tasha, with nothing to her name, gives more in her prayers and her faith than many of us do with our abundance. He paused, looking out at the sea of faces before him. For the first time in a long while, he saw something different in their eyes. The usual indifference was gone, replaced by a spark of understanding and compassion. Today, Pastor Daniel said, his voice filled with conviction, I ask you to open your hearts, to remember what it means to truly serve others, to see the individual, to reach out to those in need, one person at a time. As he concluded his sermon, a hush fell over the church. Then, slowly, people began to stand, tears streaming down their faces. The atmosphere in the church had shifted, filled with a renewed sense of purpose and compassion. Following Pastor Daniel's heartfelt sermon, a remarkable transformation swept through the congregation. As the final notes of the closing hymn faded away, people began to stir, their eyes still damp with tears. Instead of rushing out as they usually did, many lingered, forming small groups and speaking in hushed, earnest tones. Mrs. Johnson, a usually reserved widow, was the first to approach Pastor Daniel. Her hands trembled slightly as she pressed an envelope into his palm. For Tasha, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. And, and for her mother, too. This small act seemed to break a dam of hesitation. One by one, more parishioners came forward. Mr. Thompson, the local grocer, offered to provide fresh food for Tasha every week. The Wilsons, a young couple who had recently moved to town, volunteered to help with transportation to the hospital. Pastor Daniel stood in awe, watching as his congregation transformed before his eyes. The coldness and indifference that had plagued the church for so long seemed to melt away, replaced by a warmth of genuine compassion. Tasha, who had been sitting quietly in the back pew, was soon surrounded by well-wishers. Mrs. Peterson, known for her knitting skills, promised to make her a warm sweater. The Sunday school children shyly offered her drawings and small crafts they had made. As the donations and offers of help continued to pour in, Pastor Daniel felt a lump form in his throat. He caught Tasha's eye across the room and saw her small, grateful smile. In that moment, he realized that the change he had been praying for was finally happening. The church board members, who had been so resistant to helping Tasha, now approached Pastor Daniel with apologetic expressions. We were wrong, Mr. Roberts, the head of the board admitted. We forgot what it truly means to be a church. We want to help now in any way we can. As the morning wore on, the church buzzed with a newfound energy. People who had barely spoken to each other in years were now deep in conversation, discussing ways to help Tasha and others like her in their community. Pastor Daniel wasted no time in putting the congregation's newfound generosity into action. With trembling hands, he dialed the hospital where Teresa was staying. His heart raced as he explained the situation to the nurse on duty, hoping against hope that they could arrange a call between mother and daughter. To his relief, the nurse was more than willing to help. Of course, she said warmly. I'll set it up right away. When Pastor Daniel told Tasha the news, her eyes lit up with a joy he hadn't seen before. Really? She whispered, her voice filled with disbelief and hope. I can talk to Mama? He nodded, his own eyes misting over. Yes, sweetheart, we're going to make it happen. The first call was emotional for everyone involved. Tasha's hands shook as she held the phone, and tears streamed down her face as she heard her mother's voice for the first time in months. Pastor Daniel stood nearby, his heart swelling with gratitude as he watched the young girl's face transform with happiness. Mama, Tasha said, her voice choked with emotion. I miss you so much. As Tasha spoke with her mother, Pastor Daniel noticed members of the congregation quietly entering the church office.
Mrs. Johnson approached him with a determined look in her eye. Pastor, she said softly so as not to disturb Tasha's call. We've been making some calls. Dr. Richards has agreed to review Teresa's case pro bono, and the hospital board is considering transferring her to a facility closer to us. Pastor Daniel was stunned. How, how did you manage all this? Mrs. Johnson smiled. We're a community, Pastor. It's about time we started acting like one. Over the next few days, the church became a hive of activity. People worked tirelessly to secure better medical care for Teresa. The Wilsons drove Tasha to visit her mother, while others organized fundraisers to cover additional medical expenses. Tasha, overwhelmed by the outpouring of support, spent much of her time in quiet prayer, thanking God for the kindness of these once strangers. Her gratitude was evident in every small gesture, the way she helped clean the church, how she listened intently to every conversation, and the bright smile that now seemed a permanent fixture on her face. As for Pastor Daniel, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. Watching his congregation come together, seeing the tangible impact of their collective efforts, he realized that this was what he had always hoped the church could be, a true community, bound together by love and compassion. One evening, as he watched Tasha chatting animatedly on the phone with her mother, Pastor Daniel felt a profound sense of peace wash over him. He realized that sometimes it took just one person, one story, to remind people of their capacity for kindness. And in helping Tasha, they had all found something they didn't know they were missing, a sense of belonging and purpose. The day of the reunion arrived, filled with a mixture of excitement and trepidation, Pastor Daniel drove Tasha to the hospital, his hands gripping the steering wheel tightly as he glanced at the young girl beside him. Tasha sat quietly, her eyes fixed on the passing scenery, her small hands clasped tightly in her lap. As they walked through the sterile hospital corridors, Tasha's steps grew slower, more hesitant. Pastor Daniel placed a gentle hand on her shoulder. It's okay to be nervous, he said softly. Your mom is so excited to see you. Tasha nodded, taking a deep breath. I know, she whispered. I just, I don't want her to worry about me. When they reached Teresa's room, Tasha paused at the doorway. Her mother lay in the hospital bed, looking frail and tired, but her eyes lit up the moment she saw her daughter. Tasha, Teresa breathed, her voice weak but filled with love. My baby girl. Tasha rushed to her mother's bedside, tears streaming down her face. Mama, she cried, carefully wrapping her arms around Teresa. I missed you so much. The reunion was bittersweet. Teresa's condition had clearly worsened, her breath labored and her movement slow. But the joy in her eyes as she held her daughter was unmistakable. They talked for hours, Tasha filling her mother in on everything that had happened her voice growing stronger and more animated as she spoke about the kindness of Pastor Daniel and the church community. Teresa listened, tears in her eyes. I'm so grateful, she said, squeezing Tasha's hand. So grateful that you found such good people to take care of you. As visiting hours came to an end, Tasha turned to Pastor Daniel, who had been quietly observing from the corner of the room. Thank you, she said, her voice thick with emotion. Thank you for everything, for helping me, for bringing me here, for not giving up on us. Pastor Daniel knelt down to Tasha's level, his own eyes misty. You don't need to thank me, Tasha. You've taught us all so much about faith and perseverance. We're the ones who should be thanking you. Tasha smiled, then turned back to her mother. I'll be back soon, Mama, I promise. Teresa nodded, her eyes already drooping with exhaustion. I know you will, baby. I love you so much. As they left the hospital, Tasha was quiet, but there was a new sense of peace about her. She looked up at Pastor Daniel. Can we pray for everyone who helped make this happen? She asked. Pastor Daniel nodded, touched by her request. Together, they bowed their heads right there in the parking lot offering thanks for the generosity and love that had brought a mother and daughter back together, if only for a moment. As Teresa's condition stabilized temporarily, Tasha and Pastor Daniel returned to the church with renewed hope and purpose. 
The congregation, once divided, now rallied around the young girl who had touched their hearts with her unwavering faith and resilience. Tasha, despite her own hardships, continued to serve the community with a quiet grace that amazed everyone. She could often be found helping in the church's soup kitchen, her small hands carefully ladling out hot meals to those in need. Her smile, though tinged with the worry she carried for her mother, never faltered as she offered words of encouragement to each person she served. God bless you, she would say softly, her eyes shining with sincerity. He's always watching over us. Pastor Daniel watched in awe as Tasha's presence transformed the atmosphere of the church. The same parishioners who had once been skeptical now sought her out, drawn by her gentle spirit and unwavering faith. He overheard conversations in the church halls, people sharing how Tasha's example had inspired them to be more compassionate, more giving. One Sunday after the service, Mrs. Willow, a longtime member of the congregation known for her sharp tongue, approached Pastor Daniel with tears in her eyes. That child, she said, her voice thick with emotion. She's an angel, Pastor. I saw her giving her own lunch to a homeless man yesterday. It made me realize how selfish I've been. Pastor Daniel nodded, his own eyes misty. She has that effect on people, doesn't she? As the weeks passed, Pastor Daniel marveled at the change in his congregation. The church, once focused solely on its own affairs, now buzzed with activity as members organized food drives, visited the sick and reached out to those in need. And at the center of it all was Tasha, her quiet prayers and selfless actions sparking a movement of kindness that spread like wildfire. One evening, as Pastor Daniel sat in his office reflecting on the transformation, he heard a soft knock at the door. It was Tasha, her face serious but calm. Pastor Daniel, she said, I was wondering if we could pray for the church, for all the people who have been so kind to me and Mama. Touched by her request, Pastor Daniel nodded, Of course, Tasha, let's pray together. As they bowed their heads, Pastor Daniel listened to Tasha's simple, heartfelt words of gratitude. He realized that this young girl, with her unshakable faith and capacity for love, had taught them all a profound lesson about the true meaning of community and compassion. As word of Tasha's story spread throughout the community, the congregation of Pastor Daniel's church was moved to action. Inspired by the young girl's unwavering faith and selflessness, they decided to launch an official outreach program to help those in need. On a crisp Sunday morning, Pastor Daniel stood before his congregation, his eyes shining with pride and determination. My dear friends, he began, his voice filled with emotion. Tasha has shown us the true meaning of faith and compassion. It's time we follow her example and extend our hands to those who need it most. The church hall erupted in applause and murmurs of agreement. Over the next few weeks, committees were formed, plans were drawn up, and volunteers signed up in droves. The church basement, once used only for occasional potlucks, was transformed into a bustling center of activity. Pastor Daniel took charge, coordinating efforts and ensuring that every aspect of the outreach program was running smoothly. He could often be seen moving from one group to another, offering encouragement and guidance. Remember, he'd say with a gentle smile, we're not just providing food or clothes, we're offering hope and showing God's love in action. The church became a hub of charitable activities. A food bank was set up, providing groceries to families struggling to make ends meet. A clothing drive collected warm coats and blankets for the homeless. Tutoring sessions were organized for children who needed extra help with their studies. Tasha, despite her young age, was at the heart of it all. She moved quietly among the volunteers, offering a helping hand wherever it was needed. Her presence alone seemed to inspire others to work harder, to give more. As news of the church's efforts spread, more and more people from the town began to get involved. Local businesses donated supplies, schools organized fundraisers, and even neighboring churches joined in the effort. The outreach program grew beyond the walls of the church, touching lives throughout the entire community. One day as Pastor Daniel watched Tasha comforting a tearful woman at the food bank, he realized that she had become more than just the catalyst for their efforts. She had become a symbol of hope and faith for the entire town. People would point her out on the street, their voices filled with awe and respect. That's Tasha, they'd say, 
She's the reason our town has changed so much. Her faith moved mountains. Tasha remained humble, always deflecting praise and pointing to God instead. But there was no denying the impact she had made. In her quiet, unassuming way, she had sparked a movement of compassion that was transforming their community. As Pastor Daniel looked around at the bustling activity in the church, he felt a deep sense of gratitude. Thanks to Tasha's example, they had rediscovered their purpose as a congregation. They had become a beacon of hope, ensuring that no one in their community would ever be left behind again. As the sun began to set, casting a warm glow through the stained glass windows of the church, Pastor Daniel found Tasha sitting quietly in the front pew. He approached her with a gentle smile, his footsteps echoing softly in the empty sanctuary. May I join you? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Tasha nodded, scooting over to make room for him. They sat in comfortable silence for a few moments, both lost in their own thoughts. Pastor Daniel turned to look at the young girl beside him, marveling at the strength and grace she had shown throughout their journey together. Tasha, he began, his voice thick with emotion. I want you to know how much you've taught me these past few months. Tasha looked up at him, her eyes wide and curious. Your faith, Pastor Daniel continued, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Even in the darkest moments, you never lost hope. You taught me what it truly means to have unwavering trust in God's plan. Tasha smiled softly, her eyes shining with unshed tears. I just did what I thought was right, she said simply. Pastor Daniel shook his head in amazement. That's just it, Tasha. Your simple acts of kindness and faith have transformed not just me, but our entire community. You've shown us all the true meaning of compassion. He reached out and gently took her hand in his. I want to thank you, Tasha. Thank you for your prayers, for your strength, and for being the catalyst that brought our church back to its true purpose. Tasha squeezed his hand, her voice barely audible as she replied, I should be thanking you, Pastor Daniel. You took me in when I had nowhere else to go. You believed in me. They sat together in companionable silence, watching as the last rays of sunlight danced across the altar. The church, once a place of routine and complacency, now felt alive with purpose and love. Pastor Daniel felt a deep sense of peace wash over him. He realized that through helping Tasha, he had rediscovered his own faith and reignited the spark of compassion in his congregation. The journey had been challenging, but the transformation in their community made every struggle worthwhile. As they sat there, the quiet sanctuary seemed to hum with the energy of countless acts of kindness and renewed faith. Pastor Daniel knew that this was just the beginning of a new chapter for their church, one filled with hope, love, and an unwavering commitment to helping others. If you enjoyed the story of Pastor Daniel and Tasha, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.